Now we are ready for our third speaker and on a what so maybe not so stable connection, uh, but uh, fingers crossed everything will work out. Uh, we will have our uh, next speaker, Dr. Dixon Chimbanda. And the focus for our summit is, as you know, new pathways towards mental well being. And we will now listen to one new pathway or one initiative on how to work with psychological t therapy in a new and very creative way. Now, welcome Dr. Dixon Chimbanda, Associate Professor at the Centre for Global Mental Health at London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in the UK. Also psychiatrist who lives and works in Zimbabwe and the founder of the Friendship Bench. Please uh, share your findings with us uh, for the Friendship Bench project and hopefully we will have the the internet work for us welcome thank you, thank you very much thank you um i'm really honored to be given this opportunity to share with you uh lessons from the friendship bench um you know that we've picked up over the years with regards to how to improve the mental health and well-being of uh, of communities i'll start off by just briefly giving a a uh, kind of overview of what the Friendship Bench is. So the Friendship Bench, in essence, is a brief psychological therapy which is delivered by trained community grandmothers like Grandma Dangabu in this file photograph who has been working for Friendship Bench for more than 10 years. We have close to a thousand grandmothers at the moment who deliver therapy on wooden park benches in their communities. In essence, the, the treatment itself is based on, I guess, you know, principles of cognitive behavioral therapy with, uh, with emphasis on what we call problem solving therapy and uh, bits of behavior activation and um, activity scheduling. Um, the work is reflected in uh, our seminal publication from uh, a couple of years ago, which showed that you know these grandmothers could actually be trained to effectively uh, treat common mental disorders such as depression and anxiety. And six months after receiving therapy from a grandmother on a wooden park benches, um, people were symptom free. Um, what we do is pretty simple. Uh, as Friendship Bench, our core team identifies suitable trainers in communities across Zimbabwe and beyond. We train them to deliver the model. They then go on to train grandmothers in their communities. And we allocate wooden park benches in those communities. Our team then facilitates referrals to these park benches to the grandmothers who screen um, people coming to the bench using, using locally validated screening tools. After up to six sessions, sometimes much less than six sessions, clients are referred to join a support group where they get a community collective sort of problem solving uh, initiative where they resolve different problems that they are facing at community level. This is a file photograph of one of our grandmothers, this is grandmother Pussy with a client um, on the bench. Uh, the work that we do at Friendship Bench is, is not new. There are numerous examples of, um, of task shifting or task sharing. This is just an example of a systematic review um, highlighting, you know, task sharing approaches, um, you know, in mental health care, in, in low resource, in low resource settings. I think what has been new for us at Friendship Bench is this realization that the work that we do is not only beneficial for the clients, the people who sit on the bench, but it's also equally beneficial for the, for the grandmothers who are providing the therapy. Um, recently, we published work which actually shows how the grandmothers working on friendship bench um, were a lot more resilient in comparison to their peers in their communities who were not working on friendship bench. For instance, we looked at rates of post-traumatic stress disorder, or common mental disorders, and we find that the grandmothers have much lower rates than those in their communities. 
And in fact, this is work which was carried out by a colleague of mine as part of her PhD, digging deeper into um, what it was that made the grandmothers different who were involved in this work. We, we find that um, this work gives them uh, a sense of purpose. This is grandmother Mary Lee, who again has been with Friendship Bench for, for more than 10 years. And we hear these narratives, these stories from the grandmothers of how they are benefiting from providing this service within their communities. And this is grandmother Wiza. Grandmother Wiza, she's, she's the oldest grandmother still working with Friendship Bench. And um, as far as she's concerned, she, you know, she's, she remains relevant in her community because of, of this work that, that she has been doing. So that's one aspect that we've really learned, which is pretty exciting for us. The other thing that we've learned over the past couple of years is um, the importance of replicating this model in different parts of the country and, uh, and beyond Zimbabwe itself. So I'll just touch on a few replications. Um, this is a replication that we carried out in, Mila in Malawi within an HIV treatment program. And uh, we, from this, this, um, this replication, we actually also learned how the friendship bench could be modified to address the mental health needs of people living with, uh, with HIV. This is uh, a replication of the model using a digital platform in Kenya, where we find that using a modified version of Friendship Bench, which is delivered online using a chat-based um, app, which we call Inuka, was feasible, acceptable, and actually led to an improvement in symptoms. And the grandmothers actually were able to be trained to use these platforms. And um, they're quite, quite happy with the fact that they are able to use these devices to communicate with, uh, with clients. This is an example of um, you know, a replication of the friendship bench you know, within young people living with HIV, where we were focusing on, on adherence, as you may um, know, you know, adherence to antiretroviral treatment in young people is, is pretty challenging. Um, and again, this, this study showed how by integrating a friendship bench model, we are able to, to make a difference in the lives of these, these um, young people. And this is um, another replication where we were looking at a rural community. Um, and so we have quite a number of these replications and with each replication, which is really in essence, sort of an iteration of the friendship bench, we learned something new and that information goes towards, you know, streamlining, fine tuning the model, um, so that it can be better, more uh, efficient. But one of the one of the other lessons from from the replication is, you know, is the power of the groups. Um, we've learned so much from the groups. Uh, an, an area which we kind of um, overlooked over the years, we are increasingly realizing the power of social capital through the groups that are formed by people who have experienced. The, the bench, um, particularly in the rural parts of Zimbabwe, these, these networks, these connections that are formed at community level in, in rural areas have become so powerful um, in a way that enhances the well being of communities through collective um, you know, participation and, um, and social prescribing, if you like. Um, so, this has become one of our focuses, you know, in recent years, it's so it's not just about what happens on the bench, but what's also happening within within the groups. And um, to conclude, where is all of this um, taking us? Recently, we began compiling the evidence that we have gathered over the years to to put together what we are calling a friendship bench um, 
in a in a box um, which will enable people to actually to actually deliver um, uh, you know friendship bench on their own in different settings wherever they are and this this fortunately is supported by zoom um, and we are hoping that within the next couple of months we will have what we believe is a do it yourself type kit uh, for people who are interested in, in utilizing this kind of model uh, in different parts, not only of our country, but also different parts of the world. Uh, I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dixon. And the, the internet was stable, so that was that was excellent. Thank you so much. Now, I have one question for, from uh, the audience. Are the grandmothers paid? Are they employed formally at all? Great question. When we first started, the grandmothers were not paid. Most of the grandmothers get what we call an allowance, which enables them to, um, to collect data and upload data to our server because uh, one of the one of the critical things in this work is um, collect data collection and so we have to give them some kind of allowance to enable that so on average they get about 20 us dollars um, uh, a month for data mm. okay good thank you um did you experience people in such a poor state that they didn't come to the bench and and how did you deal with that? And also now when you use uh, digital devices and, and Zoom to come, uh, do you think that you will broaden the, um, um, uh, the amount of people actually coming to you to, to getting this kind of help? So let me start off with um, people with uh, severe uh, symptoms or conditions. So this is a step care model. Um, we, we obviously have to appreciate the fact that the grandmothers can not manage severe cases. So using our screening tools, we are able to identify those who are severe and need to be referred, say to a psychiatrist or clinic psychologist. For instance, um, people who might have suicidal ideations um, based on our screening tool, they would be referred. Um, and um, what was the second question again? Sorry. Um, uh, if you get if you're helped with the, the digital um, formats and also if you if you have people that you discover is so poor that they in a poor state that they don't come to the bench, they you know, you don't you don't reach them. So um, with regards to the digital platform, we actually have increased uptake um, of young people and men to Friendship Bench because they prefer to use digital platforms to communicate with their grandmothers and get help. Um, so in a way, we are now beginning to cater for a different population group that we previously didn't cater for um, because previously it was predominantly um, you know, um, women or young girls who, who utilized um, Friendship Bench. Um, as for the uh, severe cases, I think I touched on that, but um, people with severe psychological or psychiatric conditions would tend to go to a, uh, a tertiary facility because when symptoms are severe, they tend to be a lot more conspicuous. Mm. Whereas common mental disorders such as anxiety and depression are more likely to present at primary healthcare facilities and this is where we tend to capture them through the friendship bench. Mm. I see. Excellent. Thank you. You, you have a you have a shout out from um, Zimbabwe. Friendship bench has become a household name in mental health initiatives in Zimbabwe. Very informative, Professor Chimbanda, and your model is very helpful. So that was just a comment to you that this really works.